Hey, how are you? Welcome to another uh, review of the Fuji X-H2S. Today I brought along with the Fuji X-H2S, the uh, XF 200mm 2.0 lens. So far I've been shooting with the lens without the 1.4 extender attached to it, which would uh, convert it to a 2.8 lens and uh, just a bit over 400 millimeters. What I'm trying to do here today is, again, uh, test the autofocus system of the Fuji X-H2S uh, using what I believe to be Fuji's best lens, which is the uh, 200 f2. So definitely it has the, the best opportunity uh, to do its best autofocusing and uh, to have its best image quality. Even though, to be honest with you, uh, this is one lens that the attach extender is uh, totally amazing. I do not see the image quality ever suffering from attaching the 1.4 extender to the to the camera and the lens. Let me show you a few things here that I do uh, with my XF 200 millimeter lens. I like to attach the uh, Peak Design strap to it, and I attach it to the actual uh, attachments on the lens and I typically will carry the equipment from the strap because it's not putting any strain on the actual lens mount of the camera. Now on the uh, Fuji XF 200mm lens, uh, I have many options as far as settings. A preset for the autofocus, I ask the iOS button for image stabilization here. Typically I just leave it on. And I have the autofocus range right now is set to full. Depending on my situation, I'll set it to uh, five millimeters to infinity. The full gives you uh, the, the full range of uh, focus that the uh, lens can achieve. You also have a set button here. And this lens does have, uh, they're hidden by the uh, lens cover, but it has uh, buttons uh, around the actual body of the lens so that uh, you can program those to uh, start and stop out of focus. I actually shoot most of the time with it handheld. It's not uh, uh, that heavy and uh, I, I find it quite comfortable to shoot with it handheld. Opportunities for success uh, increase. Uh, no matter how good your tripod and your tripod uh, head is, even a Wimbley head, it's always going to be easier to maneuver around and swing around the lens uh, when you're hand holding it. I am out here at a botanical garden and uh, this botanical garden has a, a nice aviary and I hope to go in there and do some uh, uh, bird photography. There's not going to be a lot of opportunities for birds in flight. Uh, I, I'll take whatever opportunities are given to me and to keep testing this equipment. I'm actually kind of surprised how slow the camera is to start up from the off position. Right now I'm going to show you. Flicked on, flicked off. So on the Fuji X-H2S and as well as most Fuji X-T line camera, if you hold down the display button until the settings come up, you are able to see what each of your functions are set to. I've pretty much left everything as it came out of the box. I did change function uh, number two to exposure preview. I like to see what my exposures are through the viewfinder as I change my shutter speed and aperture. So another setting that I change on the camera is the exposure lock button, the AE lock button. That'll be this button right here. So on the auto exposure lock button, I've set it to where I can turn on and off subject detect. Currently I have it set to bird autofocus. I'm trying to figure out if there's a function button that I can set to go ahead and scroll through each of the options. It would be nice if you could have a button that you could actually press and go ahead and go through your setting. That way you can quickly uh, uh, change for what your uh, subject quickly becomes. And I would like to see that be one of the functions uh, that you can customize. Uh, perhaps it's there, but I'm not finding that that's an option. One of the things we all love about Fuji cameras has been the dials. And uh, as some of us have not liked, uh, the uh, Fuji X-H uh, system uh, has done away with uh, the dials. What I've done is uh, I'm going back to trying to use this as I would Canon or now my Sony system where I'm not going to go ahead and pick the aperture on the aperture ring of the lens, which is something I really enjoy doing. Uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and set the rear dial for aperture settings and then my front dial is set to uh, select the shutter speed. The first change I made on the camera is where I can push in the toggle button on the back and select different size focus squares along with moving it. So again, what will happen here is I push in the, boat, the, the button. I find that this uh, has worked well for me. I'm gonna go ahead and press the shutter button and you'll see the green square on the face of the wood stork. And uh, when it loses it, it'll turn into a bigger square. And uh, it looks like it goes through uh, quite a few different uh, sizes and shapes of squares. All right, so I did have an opportunity to photograph a few birds in flight. Uh, a couple of them I was able to compose and be on them. Uh, not the best composition, but right now I'm just really kind of testing the system. Uh, so it's horizontal, which actually should be the easier uh, 
autofocus tracking for for the camera to do. Typically, the biggest challenge for uh, bird photography is, uh, or really any action photography, is is when subjects are actually coming towards the camera. So these are have been mostly going horizontally and. Uh, I've bumped up the uh, shutter speed uh, quite high, so I know that the shutter speed is fast enough to stop the action. I'm picking the shutter speed uh, with the front dial and the aperture with the rear dial, and uh, that's pretty much how I'm uh, used to using uh, traditional cameras like the Canon or the Sony's. I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, going forward, uh, the best way to use the X-H2, is if, especially if you're doing uh, nature, wildlife, or action photography is always going to be to use the uh, front and rear dials to set your uh, shutter speed and aperture. Uh, it'll be the quickest way to work. Okay, so this will give you an idea. I'm on the uh, wood stork. It's uh, not uh, getting the uh, box on the eye as far as autofocus, but it does have the square on the head of the wood stork. Uh, here you're seeing how well the uh, box stays on the face of the wood stork. Uh, I wouldn't say the same for the eye tracking. It uh, has come on now, so it's tracking a little bit, but uh, the box seems a little bit kind of unstable for a bird that's really not moving all that much uh, as far as switching focus boxes. Look at the size that it just got a moment ago. I, I don't understand the reason for that. A few more thoughts here regarding the Fuji X-H2S and uh, the Fuji XF 200mm 2.0 lens. The shutter is very sensitive. Uh, you don't have to press it much to trip a bunch of photographs. Uh, I am using the mechanical shutter and I am set to 15 frames per second. I do have boost mode turned on on the camera but like I said uh, it doesn't take much to get that shutter button to trip. Another thing that I've noticed and I noticed this the first time I used the camera out of the zoo and I was shooting birds in the aviary there uh, that were actually like in the pond. I'm seeing where where the, the camera, you know, you like to take those photos where, where you get the bird and the reflection on the water. That's always a, a beautiful picture to take. But what I'm noticing is is that the focus box, you know, it'll get on the, the bird and sometimes the eye focus box will get on the bird's eye. But uh, it'll get confusing, go down and focus on the reflection instead of uh, on the bird where it which is what I wanted to do. It's kind of interesting that it seems to be easier for it to pick up a bird's face or a bird's body in the reflection on the water than it is sometimes to pick it up on the actual bird. Just uh, food for thoughts and again, everything I'm saying about this camera, this is only the second time I go out shooting with it. You guys have some thoughts and opinions and advice out there, go ahead and share. That's what I'm trying to do here so we can all share and talk about these things and, uh, and, and see how we make this camera perform the way we're all happy with. Just got my first real opportunity to take a photo of a bird flying towards the camera and uh, to be honest with you I mean this isn't typically the way I, I would not shoot birds in flight at 2.0 aperture typically I would close down the aperture but when I close down the aperture uh, to shoot uh, birds that are flying it's typically birds that are flying up in the sky and uh, when you close the aperture it's, it's, uh, it's gonna help you because you have you get more depth of field you don't have to worry about any of the obstacles in the back uh, being distracting I'm opening it up here just you know just to see how well the camera performs at totally wide open aperture and uh, trying to focus on a bird. Shutter speed was plenty fast enough, that's for sure. You know, I don't believe that I got the photo from what I see in the back of the screen, but we'll see in the computer at home uh, if I got it or not.